All right, y'all. Welcome back to the ANL podcast. It's time for some Ask ANL. We got to take questions from y'all. And then, you know, we speak on what y'all want us to speak about. If y'all want us to elaborate on anything or just have a question for us, something you want us to talk about, leave your questions in the description. We read all your comments. We might even go through and answer them. Who knows? We crazy. It's a little bitty status so, and shit, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bitty status and shit. So let's get into the question of this week. So this question, let's get into it. All right. So the question is, hey, guys, I hear, uh, I heard that y'all talked about that y'all like do a lot of reading and stuff like that. What's one book that y'all read and uh, what did y'all learn from it? Hi, right, Osman. All right. So first of all, I don't read on this. Okay. All right. Cause y'all be thinking I'm smart. I'm really not. All right. So, uh, uh it's audible also wants to sponsor us. Yo, come through. <laughs> uh, no promotions until y'all, you know, sponsors. This, hmm. this cool. If y'all go to Audible Dot A and L podcast, you know, shoot, give us a promo code. Stop playing. Shoot, blow your shit, blow your t- blow half your t-shirt off like a promo code. Like some Jake Cole shit. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, what's it called? So, uh, I would say for both of us, the book that has influenced us the most is the 10x rule. Um, and uh, what I want to speak on about the 10x rule, I think the most important thing I'll probably sprinkle in, you know, uh, other top, other sort of aspects of the 10x rule here and there. Uh, but one big theme that it has throughout the book is accountability and being accountable for the things that affect you um and i noticed this issue as kind of something that bothers it bothers me about like sort of the discourse in today's america that people uh are very willing to look at what other people are doing wrong right so black people are very quick to sort of point out look the white person's racist look that you know asian person's being mean da 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 uh they're very quick to point out white people, the U.S. government, uh, the banks. Uh, but, you know, I personally, you know, uh, th- there's not as much self-reflection. And on the flip side, you have white people. Look, it's the black people doing crime. Look, it's the Asian person people taking our spots in, in, in colleges. Uh, not really, uh, uh, you know, looking at what is going on in their personal, you know, in, in their own communities. Uh, and something that right, I learned- they did, they find that white women are the chief benefactors of- Roots society. of all evil and hell spot. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, and I think that's something that people need to work on in general. In general, my motto is, if something happened to you, Frame it as your fault in order to not take relame and bring yourself down, but to figure out how you yourself can change the situation. Uh, A quick example of that in the book is that um, the guy says, like, imagine if you're running late to a meeting, like you're driving and you're running late. And like, yes, there's like actual traffic going on, so you cannot move. So even though it's a bad situation and it's currently not your fault, However, if you spin the situation, how can I change the situation where, in which I wouldn't be late, as in, like, you know, moving and getting to the place where the meeting is earlier, or, in fact, getting into a situation where I will never be late, mm. as in, if I stay where I am, and the meeting is held where I am, and people have to come to me, and then how can I, what can I do to get to that situation, and our situation be a reality. That's what we mean by like taking the blame for things, not beating yourself up. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the problem with blaming the traffic rather than taking responsibility for yourself uh, is that you become dependent on the thing that you blame for the solution. Sort of bringing it back to race, right? If you blame all of your problems on white people and you're black, that means that you are dependent on white people to solve your problems. 
if you blame your lateness on the traffic, you are now dependent on the frequency of cars to get there on time. And that's not consistent, right? That's not something that you can control. Once you say no, how can I supersede these expectations of my education and bob all these other white people or you know, all these other people and sort of climb to the top? How can I be to work on time, right? Uh, how can I figure that out, right? Like Laomi said, the never. Can I bring the meeting here? Do I wake up earlier? Do I go to sleep later? You know what I'm saying? And framing it like that is a sort of one of the really big lessons that I took from that book. All right, so when we talk about accountability in general, if that's what we're going to call it, how do you think you can reflect that into like your everyday life or like different spheres of your life, like working out, relationships, school? Uh, I mean, most obvious example is, is exercise, physical appearance and health, right? Uh, it's very easy and sometimes even credible to say, well, you know, my genetics, you know, I'm here because of my genetics and I can't grow because, you know, my genetics won't let me grow. Uh, and so the reason why I look the way I look is because of my genetics, right? Which is something that you can't change. And therefore, you're dependent on your genetics to help you get better. That doesn't make any sense. Versus if you decide to exercise, diet better. Even if you don't improve astronomically to the point of your model status, you can be better than you were, right? And that's all by taking accountability for the way that you look and making yourself the sole driver of uh, how you look and how healthy you are. Uh, and, and this is just kind of a way that you can gain power and influence within your own life. Uh, another example would be uh, wealth. Uh, if you kind of see your wealth as determined by, oh, my boss did this, oh, the government is taking this, oh, I didn't get the schooling that I need, uh, or, you know, my teachers didn't educate me, that makes it dependent on those other people. But when you decide, okay, now, why am I not, make, do I not have enough streams of income? Am I not working hard enough at my job? What's, what, what, what's going on here? What can I do to make enough money to suffice? Once you make that flip, you'll allow yourself to learn uh, the skills that you need to be successful with money. I think the big thing about the 10X, uh, the 10X book that changed my perspective on my race, because of course there's systems in place in America that will hold you back or make things harder for you depending on your identity. But 10X pushes you to get to a place where that's the only thing holding you back. And then you overcome even that. Mm. So let's think about it. If, because we talk a lot about how, yes, these systems are in place and all that kind of stuff, but also you have to take a look at your individual actions and ask yourself, are you doing everything that you possibly can to overcome those? Because if you're not, then you kind of can't complain. Mm. You just can't sit back and say, oh, America's racist, I can't do anything, and complain then. I think you can only complain when I have 25 certifications and I'm an expert in this field and I still can't get a job. I think that's when you can complain. And even still, right, it's your responsibility to complain loud enough for people to hear you. And advocate for yourself, definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of my personal life, how it's affected me, uh, I know that for me, uh, something that was always uh, on my mind was grades. Like, dang, how am I going to get good grades? I don't know what to do. Uh, and uh, I used to kind of see grades as, you know, genetic and, you know, driven by the teacher and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I had a task. I had to get into Morehouse College. I had to get into Howard. How am I going to do that? Right? My grades was not. My grades was eh. Uh, how's it going to do that? 
And what I decided was that I was going to figure out all the cracks in the armor that I could fix and all the holes in the dam that I could fix in my effort to do well in school. This was my way of deciding that my grades were up to me. Uh, and even if they weren't up to me, I had to get the people to give me the grades that I wanted who it was up to. Uh, and so that's exactly what I did. And I you know, got into Morehouse and Howard. And in, literally in my college essay uh, that I sent to them, I said, I read a book called The 10X Rule and it allowed me to push through challenges that I had never thought were possible. Uh, and uh, it, it, um, I think it's really important to remember those sorts of things uh, whenever you're doing anything that requires high execution. Uh, talk to us, Lamy, about uh, a way that accountability affected your personal life. All right. Well, I think definitely accountability. Um, that okay. I feel like accountability really helped me when I really started to pay attention to my mental health. Mm. Because I I knew a lot of things about because I have sometimes I can get aggravated easily or like get stressed out and like freak out easily. So I did a lot of reading and I learned like different strategies that I could use for when I'm like when my emotions are getting the better of me, so I can like calm down and focus. However, sometimes I had trouble actually enacting them in mm. those moments. However, but at that point, it's on me that I have, I am put in a bad situation, but I have the tools to get out, and I have to figure out some way for me to use those tools to get out of it. That's just like being accountable and like telling myself that like we can do this. Take it easy, and we'll be out of here. Between them. Maybe just like turbulence. When you ride an airplane, well, not right now because of Corona, but when you ride an airplane, when you feel those bumps, you could freak out or you could breathe. So we're going to get through this and then do something that will be calm down, listen to music, draw, read, watch YouTube. That's usually that's what the things that I do. It's just, um, but yeah, I feel like definitely being accountable helps you like open on things. I struggled with like dealing with my emotions for years before I did all that reading and stuff. So definitely, it has put me in quite the better mental headspace than I ever. Was. And let me ask you uh, uh, a question, and this is kind of something for the viewers: Did the external environment in your situation, uh, you talk about your mental health, did the external factors get better or worse, or did they just remain the same? Well, I'd say they, they maintained the same, if not got worse. Exactly. Um. Uh, and the reason I wanted to highlight that, and, and it's the same for me with my grades. I was going into senior year. I had all new APs, honors classes. Uh, I was taking a bunch of hard courses. So notice, even though our environments worsened, once we decided to take accountability, our results increase and that was again a result of deciding hey i'm not failing because of this environmental whatever is going on i am failing because of something that i can i can change and so even when the environment took a dip we were still able to rise and other people would fall in our circumstances uh yeah i feel like we answered that question uh, i feel like we answered that question uh, pretty thoroughly. All uh, right. Uh, so, if we highly encourage that you check out this book, it's called The Ten X Rule by Grant Cardone. We we'll put it up right now. So, definitely check it out. It's basically like charging your motivation full of steroids thanks. and putting systems in place to be procrastination, get yourself back on your feet, and obtain goals that are only exist in your wildest imagination. We're not sponsored, but they should sponsor us. Thanks, Green Card, don't hit us up. I'm saying. All right, so, Augman, do you want to tell us about what happened, what's, what's new? 
with our channel and what we're doing. This is a segment that will be both on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, we will be giving you guys, the viewers and the followers, more choice and influence when it comes to the direction of our uh, YouTube channel. We're still very new to this, and we would love you guys' help in uh, pushing our channel forward uh, and giving us a perspective on what you guys want. So in the future, uh, every Sunday, we will host a questionnaire on our Instagram stories for uh, at the Ask a &L segment. Uh, that is a segment we do at the end of each podcast, and that is where we will answer any of your questions. Uh, and on top of that, uh, for the other segments, uh, sorry, for the other form of content, music battles, uh, every Tuesday, uh, there will be a poll that goes up on my Instagram, uh, Ahmed underscore K squared, where you can decide between two battles, there'll be a poll and you can decide between two battles what exactly you want, which battle, you know, do you want. Uh, that will be coming in the future and it'll help us kind of gauge what you, the audience, want to see, but also, you know, give you more incentive to pull up because, you know, your question might get answered or the battle that you wanted might come through and, and actually happen. Uh, so, yeah, those are a few changes that we're going to be making to the uh, annual podcast in the way it's run. If you want to see those changes in action, follow Best of Leo on Instagram and follow uh, Ahmed underscore K squared on Instagram. All right, definitely. And also, um, talk to us, hit us up with any with any topics you want us to cover, especially because we're going to be doing a lot with recent events. We're, be trying, to, we're trying to stay as up to as possible. Also, other things that you want us to do, if we get a big enough following, we can do IG Live, YouTube Live. So make sure you share, comment, like, share with your friends. We really appreciate it. And we can help get more content to you more frequently. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been the a &O Podcast, Episode 3. Uh, and we appreciate you all sticking with us for all this time. Uh, see you. We'll see you all in the next one.